Hello everyone. Can you hear me? Is it working? I think it is. All right. So nice, nice. It's working. Yeah. Hello, guys. <clears throat> I hope you're all doing well. So we're going to be reviewing some tracks today. Let me check my email just to make sure I don't miss anything important. Okay. Yo, bro. Hello. <laughs> How is it going? Okay. So I already have one track. Someone sent a track uh, before the the stream even started, so <laughs> so let's start right let's start right away, I guess. Um, so let me organize my files. Okay, so I will try to match the level of my voice and the music better because some people told me that my voice is too quiet compared to the music, so. It's a bit difficult because I need to constantly adjust the level of the music. So I will try to do that so it's not all unbalanced and you don't have to turn your volume all the time. Would be good, I guess. <laughs> so. Okay, let's take a listen. So this is by uh, Nordic Dan, Persecute 2. Let's listen. Okay, wait, I need to listen to this again. I think it's a real breath of someone. I, th I think you're... Did you record yourself? That's pretty cool, I think. I think you recorded yourself. Anyway, so there is a few things with this track that could be better. So let's start by the beginning. Oh, Oh, you did that then? Yeah, that's pretty genius. I think you're the first person who records their own swooshes with their voice. Okay, so the first thing... It's not tap water, it's, it's the blood of my enemies. Uh, 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 sorry, there is a phone call, just let it ring. Okay, whatever. Um... So we have a stereo field problem here, uh, on this synth here, in the middle of the, the booms. So this high synth is just too narrow, so you want to put some big reverb on it, a doubler maybe, something. <clears throat> it just feels very mono, so it doesn't work. And then these big drums, um, 
Okay, so now my voice is too loud. Hold on. Um, so then these big drums, they're a bit, a bit too muddy. So I would cut maybe around. Around there. You can hear the difference. So, that. I need to try to match my voice with the music. Okay. So, it's just a bit dry. And not here, but later it's gonna be a bit dry, so... This percussion, for example, the, the higher one. Da -da, da -da, da -da. It feels too dry. Still a bit muddy, a bit too dry. See, when the sound stops here, it feels like it feels like there is no tail. You need more ambience from this, so more whole reverb, more big reverb. The high synth here, it's also too dry. And, and the, the fast percussion da, 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 is too muddy, same thing, too much low mids and too dry. It's more around um, 400 hertz. Five hundred. Just on this percussion here. And also the dynamics, it feels a bit squashed. This is supposed to be a big hit, right? But the dynamics, it's not very punchy, so you want to reconsider the low layer of this hit. You need something punchy here. Like, I can hear the high end. Might be fine for the high end, but you like that low punchy element that really doesn't punch through. It's very light of a sound. It's just all highs, basically. There is a muddy hit again, the same one from the intro, I believe. So you want to fix that, okay. And, uh... Yeah. But, yeah, I think just a few EQ fixes, a bit more reverb here and there. And it's gonna be really good, so... Okay, so let me see the next track. Da -da -da. Okay, downloading the next track. So th this is a track by someone, someone called someone, <laughs> so let's see, actually no, sorry, this is a track by uh, HMDGLCHN, I think he just smashed his keyboard while typing his name, but <laughs> okay, so l let's listen to it.
Okay, so nice, nice, nice. So let's start from the beginning. So this is a bit noisy. You might want to cut the noise from the drone here, like 10, 20 K noise, just white noise. drones here you might want to dynamic EQ you might want to dynamic EQ a harmonic down down I mean which would be around 435 it's less jarring So the bass sounds in general in this track are too loud and too boomy, around uh, 80, 100 hz, 120 hz. So you want to kind of lower the, the... See, it's a bit too boomy here. It just peaks a bit and it's like, yeah. Here I start to hear that the panning is too, uh, too extreme, especially on the double basses. So you did pan the strings too hard, and it's not a realistic stereo image. In the whole, you would never uh, get that kind of super wide image, uh, and it's just not natural because then you have too much sub bass on the right. So it's too extreme. It's fine to have the basses on the right, but this is too extreme. Here you can hear how how much on the right it is. Yeah, you can submit multiple tracks. And so because you have too much lows, boomy lows, it makes the mids sound empty. Because you have that. Sound. See how loud this is. And then you have your violins on the left, which are a little bit too dry. And... Um, also, frequencies-wise, they're a bit nasty around 2K, 3K. So you want to work on that. So the birdies uh, are nice. You could put more reverb so it's a bit more ethereal kind of feeling. Same critics with the bass for the rest of the track, by the way. Again, violin's nasty at 2 3k. Too much padding, especially in the bass. And just a bit of a weird stereo image. Um, I'm thinking maybe you have a stereo enhancer or something. It just feels very odd, the stereo image. So if you have any kind of widening tools, don't do widening tools. Just pan a bit and uh, reverb and because it's, it sounds a little bit odd like that. It doesn't feel... Sorry, the track is too loud and my voice is, my voice is too quiet now. Um, it doesn't feel um, natural enough, the stereo image. I need to stop moving my volume knob because I keep changing the ratio of the music and my voice, so I feel like my voice is good, but it's not. This is complicated, guys. <laughs> I'm trying. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this track. Um, I hope it helps, but yeah.
right so uh let's see let's see let's see the next track uh how do i download from this website like this okay Okay, so we got a track by someone called someone and the track is called 3N7V. So let's see. It looks mastered to me. <clears throat> uh, mystery it depends on the track. You should email me with the, with the details. Oh, it's yours done. Damn, that's good. Okay, so it's not yours. <laughs> okay, well, whoever it is, I hope you're watching. Well, you're probably watching. Uh, this is really great. So few details here and there we can tweak. So the the Celesta might be a bit too that's that's a Celesta, right? Or Glocken no it's not a Glockenspiel. It's um I'm pretty sure it's a Celesta. Uh, it's a bit loud. No, there is a glockenspiel as well. There is a few things. Okay, it's a piano and the glockenspiel. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm deaf. Yeah, it's a, it's a piano and the glockenspiel. So the piano is a bit... It's a bit too loud, I would say. And maybe the glockenspiel a tiny bit. Like the, st the track starts slow. You might want to just lower that a tiny bit, but it's almost perfect for me. I would just... I would just notch it down a tiny bit. This basically everything that does this cling kind of sounds. Just so that the sustains kind of sing a bit more. It's subtle stuff. It's really subtle stuff. Um, 
I would actually not dynamic EQ anything. I would leave all the resonances. I like kind of how I like how sometimes some of the resonances in the mid range kind of poke through on this piano Glockenspiel combo. Um, but uh, it's just a bit too repetitive and loud, so just um, one two dB less. So then the strings. Okay, then maybe the flute. So the flute is a little bit too strident. So you could maybe dynamic EQ it a bit around here. And also a tiny bit less air on the flute. So it's nice to boost air on everything, but when it's that much air, it, everything can get a bit too airy and too close and you can, you can start to lose some depth. So if you cut the flute here, it would actually have more depth. So make sure it's not too resonant here, but you also cut the noise. So, so it actually gives a bit more depth, maybe more reverb on the flute to get contrast. Because you have your strings which are pretty airy, you could have the flute a bit reverby and a bit more far away, especially in that context, in my opinion. There is not too much to critique. Um, oh, it's you. Ep Epix, Epix 7. It's beautiful. It's beautiful music indeed. This one, this track is great. So the harp maybe is a bit too much on the left. You can hear that kind of high treble thing here. Gling, gling, gling. See, like it's like ding on the left. It's a bit too much. And when it comes to the strings, uh, the strings ever so slightly too much air. Like I get the the idea of of having so much air on the strings, and I like this for this type of track. It's kind of magical, but maybe that's a tiny bit over the top. So. Just like one dB, you know, I would maybe kind of tame it. Or maybe you just put a, a tape on the strings and it takes, you know, it takes care of it. But it's really subtle stuff. Like overall, it's really great. Uh, the solo violin, it's on the right. Right. Maybe push the solo violin a bit more, so it kind of counters the ensemble violins on the left a tiny bit more. This track is so amazing. I guess someone wakes up at the end. So it has to be a dream or something. Okay, so... So next... We have a... Uh, Mi Titan. Let me download your track. Okay, let's listen to it.
Okay, so this is pretty good. Sorry, did I forget to say who it was? No, it's Me Titan. Yeah, Me Titan. Uh, Melting Snow. So this track is pretty well mixed, but there are a few things that kind of bother me, so let's see. So I have this constant note here. Uh, on the cello star. So this range just <clears throat> gets a bit jarring, so I would just cut it overall. So it's less jarring. Also, maybe it's just a bit loud overall, so maybe first thing, try to reduce the cellista a bit. And then you can have a missed opportunity here, it's all kind of narrow, you kind of got the cellista in the middle, and um, the harp also is, is kind of in the middle. Yeah, these two instruments are really in the same spot, so you can maybe make a choice, one left, one right, a bit, not too much, but a bit. The chili. Uh, they're a bit too muddy and loud on the right because of low maids, so let me demonstrate. This chili here. And they're just too resonant here on the right, and you need to cut there quite a bit. Actually, if I do that, it will even rebalance the track panning-wise, most likely. See if I just take the right side. It kind of works, actually. But just do it on the chili, cut these low mids, clear up the sound, and it's gonna re-even out the panning. The strings, I guess, they feel a bit, um, a bit raw sounding. You could probably boost a bit more treble, cut a bit more mids, so it's a bit more, a bit less honky around here. Yeah, it's always the same because it's always the same instrument. So for most libraries, it's the same spots. The thing that will change is the amount you cut. Some libraries are more acute, some libraries are more raw, and it depends on their mic setup and everything. So yeah. So maybe here, uh, on the whole strings. So it's a bit... A tiny bit nicer. Just get a bit of more of a smooth sound like that, you know, a bit less cloudy, boxy. Uh, but yeah. It's really cool overall though, so it's a nice little track. Yeah. Yeah, the cinematic studio string is always very dark, so that's why you probably want to brighten it a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit in that case. Okay. So then we got um, Zone B Studio, but he forgot to include his link, so let me check my emails. Okay, I have it. Okay, ooh, that's pretty loud. Let's see. I'm gonna have to lower this a lot, most likely.
Okay, so there are several issues. The biggest not being the dynamics actually, but the EQ. So the EQ. No, that is that is cherry smoothie. Anyway, that's not the point. Okay, so uh, seriously, so so so. Uh, the EQ is a bit muddy, uh, so you have lots of problems in the low mids. And for all your low mids, all your low mids kind of mask the higher frequencies, so you get that kind of blanket feel over your track. So um, that's kind of a problem. So you might want to check around 500 hertz. You can see, yeah, 400, all this range here, you have too much going on. It just kind of sounds muffled, right, overall. But you can't just do that on the whole track, so ideally you wanna... Sorry, let me rebalance the volume a bit. So ideally you want to to sort out the EQs of the individual instruments so that you cut the mud where it is and you know. So in that case, the horns, all your brass, especially the stack brass, I heard some staccato brass at, uh, at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's really way too honky here. So you want to take care of that. But, so once you kind of clear the low mids and get more treble color into there. For example, your strings, your strings, I can kind of hear them peak around here. And then they sound kind of rolled off, so you might want to put some air on your strings, air on your brass. Clear low mids here and there. The horn theme, for example, the melody. The melody is actually quite buzzy already, so that's that's fine, but it still has too much of that fundamental, so you want to cut the fundamental harmony compared to the higher ones. Like, you kind of want to keep the 1k plus, but you want to lower the very first harmonic here. So just thing like that. And, and then the second huge problem you got here is the dynamics. So it's just not punching correctly because it's a bit squashed. So especially the sub bass area. Uh, check what instruments you have in the sub bass if you have any rumble and cut all of that. And make sure that your drums are the only thing that's kind of pushing the 50 hertz. You know, uh, you can kind of filter the double basses if they go below 80. Just cut them slightly with kind of a gentle slope. And make sure you don't have any kind of rumble that's coming from, I don't know, things that are just interfering. And don't limit and compress the mix as much so you leave more room to breathe for the low drum dynamics because they are really important. So I don't know how much you compressed and limited the mix but it sounds like it's not allowing enough dynamics. So yeah, that, that's what you kind of want to care of. All right. Uh, next we have Harmony IB. And he's saying, so this is a new track he has been working on. Okay. Let's see. It's called Victory.
Yeah, it is pretty cool, but so I'm not feeling any kind of good stereo image. It's all kind of mushed. See. It's not really able to tell each instrument section uh, directionally. So if you have any stereo enhancers, remove them and pan a bit more. Like the middle of the track, the stereo image feels just... It, yeah, like it's hard to tell what's going on. So that's a bit weird. The violins here don't sound on the left, they really sound centered. Um, the sustained strings you have here, they're a bit too harsh, uh, so you want to kind of cut the lumens just to make them a bit less, uh, a bit less harsh. So, like around there. Yeah, panning is scary because you can go too far. But try to do the balance panning, uh, not true stereo panning, and just shift them a bit. Um, you can use the A1. A1 stereo control. This is really nice and transparent, so... So, yeah, you kind of want to remove the that's coming from the sustained strings. And then... Same thing with the melody, violin melody, it's just too much here. It's not very open and feels too nasal because of that frequency. Same thing for the horns, the horns don't feel panned enough, they feel too censored. At the dynamics it feels a bit too squashed. The kick doesn't have any room to breathe. It just feels all a bit squashed, so you wanna ease that off a bit. And potentially you might wanna put more reverb on everything, because the sound overall is a bit like a scoring stage sound. Doesn't sound like a huge hole, so... It's a bit dry for me, so if it was me, I would probably just add a bit more hot reverb to give more size to everything. The strings do feel a bit dry. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, but yeah. It's a bit of a pancake, as Patrick said. You don't need to push it that much. Because then you get the sustain sub or whatever there is sustain at the same level as the kick, so the kick doesn't sound impressive anymore. So to be clear, you can make a sausage like that. Something can look like a sausage, and it can still be punchy. But in many cases, uh, if it looks like a sausage, it's not punchy. But yeah, just the looks don't tell anything because you can have really compressed mixes, but within the mix, they manage to create the separation in the bass, so it actually feels punchy. But in that case, it's not the kind of pancake you want. You want more something like a waffle. Y you want the high points and the low points. You know what I mean? So yeah, I go for the waffle, not the pancake. Okay, so Mathieu de Grey with a new track. Let's see. Okay, so let's listen to it.
Okay, so this is pretty interesting. Actually, this is not something to do with mixing, but it's a recommendation. I would probably speed up the tempo of this track because it feels a bit slow. So you, you might want to you might want to speed up the tempo of this track if you still can. Like if you already mixed everything, maybe not, but. So, I'm just gonna answer one question quickly. Uh, the reason for it is because back then you didn't have as good of limiters as we have today. So exporting at quieter levels, like minus one, kind of prevented any kind of uh, intersample clipping or clipping when converting to MP3s, for example. But nowadays we have tropic limiting, we have uh, double productions or whatever so you can export at minus 0 0.1 or even at zero if you have these protections enabled so you don't need to leave that space here um, that that loudness margin okay so It's a tiny bit muddy. There is an instrument here that does like uh, do. Yeah, it's a cello. Cello is a bit muddy. So you want to cut that. Just clean it up here. It gets a bit too much because it it's that note is getting held for a long time. Of all, there is some resonances in the low mids, which I'm not a fan of. Um, can you hear it? So control these ranges a bit more, dynamic EQ, something like that. So the hits don't sound very punchy, it's mostly highs. I mean, there is a sub, it, it seems, but... It's a bit flat and not punchy, so we'll probably keep, the, keep that layer. Maybe even cut some highs. But it's a bit harsh, so maybe cut here on the high layer. And on that high layer, you just cut the lows and you put another sample to take care of the bass, because the bass from this is not good. But you can probably keep that high layer and just maybe tame a bit the metallic element. It's still a bit honky here with the brass, all, all that. I need to take care of that range. And the choir is too muddy. So when you have a choir in the context of a full orchestral piece, it's really not a good idea to keep too much low mid from the choir because what comes through in a mix is not the low mid from the choir. These things are going to be buried by the horn, the strings, all that range is going to be occupied already. So what you really want to highlight in the choir when it's in these busy uh, situations is really the high mids. So like the 3K, 4K region and above. So not as much that kind of mud here, because it's not really going to come through anyway, if there is other things going on. You can probably make the choir a bit more... It's not going to work on the whole mix, but a bit more, a bit more high mid centric, and just cut a bit of the mud, so that the brass is occupying this range mostly, and not so much the choir in that situation.
just kind of want, you just kind of want to hear the words and the treble and stuff like that. So don't overdo it, but just slightly. Because right now the choir feels a bit washy, low mid rangey, if that makes sense. So yeah, but it has potential once you fix these issues. And yeah, if you can speed it up again, would be a good idea. So it's less slow of a track. Okay. So after this, we got uh, Nordic done again with another track. Uh, it's asking me to log in in Dropbox. Why? Please sign in or register to access this page. I'm just going to sign in with Google. That's odd. I don't know why. Oh, maybe because they want me to ask, to like ask permission for the file or something. Maybe that's why. And it's saying the file doesn't exist now. Yeah, no problem, Mathieu. Uh, done, 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 done. It's telling me that your file doesn't exist for some reason. Maybe you moved it or something. Let me see. Maybe I. I Yeah, the file doesn't exist. Maybe try to upload this again. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your, your second track, I think it's the second one you sent. <clears throat> it's telling me the file doesn't exist. I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, upload to Discord, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, no problem. After we review this track by then, I'm going to take a five minute break. <clears throat> it's good to take a, a bit of an ear break every hour. But yeah, right now is the sound of silence. Yeah, feel free to send any genre, by the way. You can send jazz, you can send country, you can send anything. I just happen to be more orchestral focused. Oh my god, the, the chat is killing me. I'm gonna go under the tap for five minutes. If I do that, I will drown. If you got some heavy metal stuff, go ahead, I can, I can critique heavy metal. Okay, I'm just going to download another track in advance, so it's ready. All right, let's just do this track and then we will do a dance track and then we will take the break. So, uh, Prison of Saints looks interesting. That's a track by, uh, by Ashraf, I believe. Yeah, it's you. So a track by Ashraf, amazing composer, by the way, Egyptian composer, he's great. Let's see.
It's great, it's great. Composition-wise, even mixing, the mixing is fine, but composition-wise, I mean, Ashraf is one of the top composers in Egypt. He composes for great TV shows and everything, so of course it's going to be good. So uh, there is a few things I can talk about. Apparently he said it's an old track also, so let's keep that in mind. Maybe the, the pad here is a little bit... Um, the pad is a little bit too resonant. And the piano is just a tiny bit honky. That's a 600 hertz problem. 500. It's gonna be a bit nicer if you cut a bit there in the intro. And then... Yeah, the, the transitions, yeah, it's a uh, tinaguo. It's always a little bit extra uh, sometimes in these transitions. A bit artificial in some situations. Same thing, it's a bit honky, the, the pad here at 500. I know you like a lot of air in your mixes. I would go a bit, a bit less air on this, especially at the beginning. Potentially at the end when there is a lot of stuff going on, but maybe I might just do an EQ automation or something, but it's a bit too much air for me. Just the raspiness of the cello. The padding could be a bit more on the ensemble strings. Like, I kind of want to hear some stuff on the left here. And still, it's a bit honky around this mid range again. Nordic, Nordic, what's up? <laughs> oh, I read this. I read this actually as my name. Wow, that's tricky. Okay, so then the the synth here that builds, it's a bit too mono, so you really need to have more space here. So I would probably do like a, I would probably do like an ambient reverb kind of room thing into uh into a whole reverb just to give that massive hence similar kind of synth here for that rise like a room into a hole you, you know the trick maybe a bit less on this bram a bit less of this just kind of overpowering and then the, the strings are too quiet here the, the spigato strings and a bit too centered the, the bram here is particularly loud and muddy Just cut the bit of maze on the on these brams here. It's taking too much room in the mix. Express mastering.
<laughs> okay, okay. Actually, I would, I would really enjoy mixing this one. Anyway, let's be beside the point. <laughs> and, and the cello, the cello at the end is a little bit too muddy here. So dynamic EQ again, a few dB. Could work. Oh man, I love, I love that climax. It's so, it's so nice. Uh, okay. Um. So then we have. Uh, okay. Uh. So let's listen to dance track, and then let's take the break. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's check this one. Hits. The hits are too soft. was too loud and too sudden Okay, so there is some cool things that have a lot of potential in the mix, but... So let's talk about the hits first. So we kind of have a, a bit of a problem with the low end. It's not as punchy as it should, so these layers are not gonna work for that. But these layers are pretty good for the mids, like really nice for the mids. And the highs, you can actually just even boost more highs in this one and then cut the lows and replace with a punchier hit because the low end of this is just not good enough like if you, if you accidentally loaded the glue uh, if you if you want punchy low end that's not gonna be good just check out the low end how flat it is it's like there is almost no punch so you want to layer something And some of the synths felt a bit too dry. Uh, I would advise putting a room just to give them a different tone a bit. The, the, the tone is less kind of immediate and, you know, close. This highs, I mean, you have a reverb on it, but maybe just, I don't know, the, the highs just don't blend. It's also a sound design thing. Maybe you want to use more oscillators if possible. I don't know what you're using to do this sound. It's just a little bit too treble heavy and not thick enough, you know, it doesn't have that texture. The texture is a bit too soloistic, if that makes sense. This hit actually has a pretty okay low end. Maybe you could use this low end for all the rest. But yeah, it doesn't come through as nicely here.
this hits can be louder in volume. Um, this is more like a sound design track. It's not an orchestral track with lots of sustains that are really important and everything. Like, you need these hits to be super loud. Like, I mean, if if you get a placement with this trailer, they're gonna they're gonna put the hits up twenty dB anyway. So you might as well give them a preview with hits which are much louder than this. Yeah, I would say at least six, five, six dB louder, maybe, maybe not, maybe three, three dB louder. Try, try with the hits three dB louder and see how it sounds. Like, you know, for this type of style of of trailer track. And you can put more reverb on these hits so that the highs and mids have more tail, not the lows, but just the highs and the mids. A bit more tail. Okay, so that sound that comes in is too loud. So you need to lower it overall uh, and maybe do a maintain automation just to kind of introduce it better. And in the climax, it's it's very muddy, so in the climax, it's just it's too resonating around this 200 hertz. You probably want to use more of a normal French horn melody. You might just want to delete that sound. It's not very good. Like, there is no reason a French horn wouldn't be better, honestly. This sound is not particularly nice in any range, in my opinion. And like, you need bigger hits in the climax here, like boom, every bar. You need some kind of sync point. Otherwise, it's not good for a trailer, so. And this needs to be much bigger. Like boom, you have the sweep and then boom. It needs to be kind of a different hit, something that's like, has a different tone and is much louder. Every time you have these sweeps, that's like the massive hit that should follow. But it's very discreet right now. Yeah. You might want to just have a, like another layer or something metallic, just to kind of differentiate these hits more. So like the fast hits are like that. And then the mega hit is like has like a clang or something else on top, you know? It differentiates itself a bit more. Not just in volume, but in tone also. So yeah, but it's, it's a cool track. So guys, I'm gonna take a five minute break because my brain is starting to stop. <laughs> and then I will be back and we will continue with the tracks. Okay, so see you soon guys.
Hey guys. Sorry, I'm eating chocolate. Just give me a second. You probably don't want <laughs> you probably don't want the ASMR. I'm not gonna do some ASMR so Okay. Is it still working? I hope it's working. <sighs> okay. Great. So next we have a track by AG. It's a cover of Game of Thrones. Nice. I love this show. Even though the ending was ruined, it's still a great show. And the music is really good, so let's see. <clears throat> I'm not gonna start a Game of Thrones war. Oh my god. Please no. Man, that's great. You did the cover correctly, uh, but the, unfortunately, the mix is very, very muddy. So that's kind of ruining the composition because it's particularly muddy. So you want to be really careful with these low mids, especially when you have all these low tune instruments, low boomy drums, low cello, and everything. It can easily get out of control. But the composition sounds good. So. So you, you need to, to cut that low. Actually, I can just do it on the master and it will probably make a big difference. See, that, that cello is very resonant, only on certain notes. So you want to dynamic EQ this note or just surgically cut it. So you see the problem, you want to do this on the individual instruments which are too loud, uh, too boomy, so the drums a bit muddy here, the cello definitely out of control on some of the notes. And then the drums could use more high end, like more 3k, like high mids and stuff. I think you guys, you guys are too nice. <laughs> And, and yeah, you can put a bit more air into the stuff. So the cello, for example. The cello sounds rather rolled off and kind of 
dominant around this area, but not so much here. So like everything kind of lacks air in your mix. Except the cymbals, I guess. So yeah, and you really want to take care of the resonances in the low mids uh, on each instrument. Even that, even that note is too resonant. So it's really out of control. Maybe it's the reverb you're using. I don't know. It could be the reverb you're using that's partly um, adding these resonances. So yeah, if you can add that treble color, compress th these many things, it would be much better. When it comes to the drums, the problem is not in the sub bass. Don't filter the sub bass, you need it. The problem is uh, like around 120. But you can even have more sub bass compared to the, the limit. That, that's really kind of, the, kind of the issue that's going on. So, yeah. I mean, it's hard to critique anything else because it's hard to hear anything else. Maybe I could hear more details, but the drums are kind of masking everything. So yeah. So yeah, I hope it helped and uh, yeah, that's, that's the mud problem. It's pretty common with, with low tuned tracks like that. and. The instruments. I mean, yeah, if your symbols like air, <laughs> you probably messed up something. Symbols are usually very sharp, so. Okay, so then we got another track by, by me, Titan. Which is called Foul. Okay, let's listen to it. I think I'm gonna stop there because there is so many things, little details I wanna talk about. 
I will just forget if I listen to the rest. So let's let's take care of the first half first. So So the intro, what I thought. Oh yeah, sorry, by the way, I don't look at the donation notifications because I don't have it on my screen. It's only in the OBS, which is hidden. So, so I don't see them, but yeah, I, I go through every track in, in the order that the donations were received. So no worries. Uh, so what I noticed with this string here, all this intro, it's a bit too harsh. Um, you probably want smoother strings. It's kind of a romantic song. So there you go. It's a bit sizzly at the end, sometimes you might want to filter that a bit on the violins. Just on multiband compress the sizzle, just cut here the 2k, 3k so it's less old fashioned sounding, like old western kind of strings and it's more smooth, emotional. Yeah. The flute here is probably a bad recording because it's very sizzly and not in a nice way. Sometimes you have nice air in the flutes and stuff. But this kind of air, if, if it's this texture, this kind of sizzle, then it's not worth boosting. So you can cut back on that high boost you did. And or maybe you just boosted too much, like you boosted 8 dB on this or something, but you can do like a, a cut like that. I would probably like multiband compress dynamic EQ it as well as cutting, so something like that. Because it's just too sizzly, basically. Yeah, then you probably boost it too much. Uh, the hop here is you boost it too much. So you don't want this kind of high end. So make sure you, if it's like poking really hard, you can multiband compress it. If it's just uh, too much of a high boost, just turn it back. Um, the hop can be wetter and more in the back of the track. It's not really a lead instrument or something that needs to be up front or anything. It's just a detailed thing, so don't make it so close to your ears. Just drown it in reverb, like harps can be drowned. Just make sure you control the 200 300 hertz because when you drown it, these frequencies resonate not a lot more. The, the little bells. Is it a cellista? It's a cellista. So you can cut the little cellista around 2k. Or just try to lower it in, in volume a bit because maybe just volume will fix it. This cello is a bit muddy. So control the resonance. There is a huge resonance. 
not. So what is this? Wherever it's coming from, I really don't know. But it, it needs to go. The, the, the kick can be a bit louder, the percussion here. Tiny bit. Uh, maybe not here, actually, not, that's loud enough. In fact, I would, yeah, I would compress these kicks. Uh, they're a bit too loud. It feels a bit weird. It's fine before, but the hard bit kind of thing with the piano. It's a bit too much. Maybe put a limiter on them and compress like 10 dB. So it's like flatter. It's like not as transient. And lower in volume also. It's easy to not realize how loud these things are when it's just bass, because you can't really hear it, it's more like something you feel. But yeah, it's cool, it's, it's a cool track. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I like that, and the flute again at the end, um, too sharp. So next we got uh, Colin Brefka with a Dropbox, Dropbox link. The Eye of Horus. It's gonna be an Egyptian track. I'll remove the stereo enhancer. <laughs> That's way, way too much stereo enhancer. Oh, yeah, you, you can feel the stereo image, even the reverb is out of phase. It's ooh, yeah, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, so. You really want to minimize the use of these things, so maybe 5% on the mids, 10% on the highs at most. You did at least 30, 35% here. That's really cool, this brass thingy. Is it like a fluttered brass or something? I don't know, it's really nice. to remix this because it's a really cool track so f first off remove the stereo enhancers but then it's going to be difficult to really give advice because i mean from this because it, the sound is going to change so much your multimedia compressor has a stereo separation not but the same place yeah you want to remove that So it feels like there is too much mid-range and not enough warmth and bass. But 
the base impact with with completely change once you fix this terror separation so it's hard it's hard to really give precise advice advice but you can turn up the driving drums But you, that, that bass should come back to some degree once the stereo separation gets fixed. So you need that impact back from the, the drums. You can control the mids a bit on this uh, nice horn articulation. Actually, no. No need, don't EQ it. Just maybe lower it slightly in volume. So all the staccato violin here is inaudible. On the left, you want to turn up this, this staccato violin because it's being drowned by the sustain stuff. Like by the, the choir is too loud. The double basses are too loud. It's just too mid-range focused right now. I mean, I mean the double basses are not loud enough. That's what I mean. like a tuba or whatever you have it's just dominated by the 501k here and uh, it makes the track feel a bit small you want that super low tuba harmonic that low brass to really be heavy like i'm not sure if it's the stereo enhancer that's making the other elements super weak or if you didn't even write the baseline for the tuba. Okay. I mean, there is some trombones for sure, but... I think you might not have a tuba, that could be why. Um, so, yeah, so that's my composition thing, but... Um, you need to have this low bass going on. Otherwise, if you just have that mid-range line and you don't have like the lower octaves to kind of support the music the music is gonna feel thin so you wanna make the music bigger it's not so much about the mid range of the low brass more about the low mids and bass of the low brass so that it's carrying the the rest of the frequencies more because right now all the mid range is overpowering the, the bass But I can't I can't really hear a tuba or anything. I suggest you kind of reference other tracks and you know like maybe if you have a really low brass patch, it should be pretty much as loud, if not louder, as the lead horns, for example. So that's a good starting point. But yeah, number one thing, just turning off that uh widener effect. The trombones you can cut uh, around 1k here. You can kind of scoop the trombones here. Yeah. Um, so then we have um, Cloudy Sky. The Cloudy Sky with two tracks. Let's let's uh, check the first one. By the way, guys, uh, I will stop the donations now. Uh, so if you want the last feedback after after these two tracks by Cloudy Sky, there is none left. Uh, if you want your track to be reviewed, you can send it now, like in the next in the next uh, three minutes, let's say. And after that, I will I won't be reviewed reviewing what, what is sent afterwards because uh, no need to make it longer than two hours or something. 
but if you want one more review you can send it now just just let me know in the chat if you will send it now and i will wait for it you want me to skip this one well if you say so okay oh all right all right all right i will get the second one And this track is called The End. So what if, why don't we finish the stream with this track? <laughs> okay, awesome, Colin. Awesome. But if you want to, yeah, if you guys want a last review, just let me know now and I will take it as well. But if nobody says, I guess we can end on The End. That's, that's fitting. Yeah, that, that's really fitting, actually. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Let, let's just finish with this one. I mean, there is no other tracks, so okay. Officially, review, reviews are officially closed, so let's finish. This is the last one. All right. I really like the bells. This is very nice composition. This is a very good build up. So the horns feels a bit artificial. It's it's a bit of a programmation thing, so that's what Patrick said. Like for the beginning, especially for the beginning of the track, even though it's called the end. <laughs> um, you can make these swells kind of softer and maybe more of a fade in. So it's it's less like bah, bah. it's more like ooh, ooh. you know what I mean. And you don't need it to be that that buzzy. Like don't go into the range that's buzzy. Stay stay a bit underrated at the beginning. So both the horn and the choir kind of have an EQ problem, so it's in the mid-range. At 500 hertz. Like you want to take care of the honky, honky element. The honky element is going to be like 600 something on the horn. See how it instantly sounds more polished. So 
I mean, that's too much, obviously, you just need to do it on the horn alone. The strings do sound too dry, I agree, so you can add a bit more reverb on this. And actually, the horns, the horns also sound too dry. This is the kind of track that can be pretty wet, so add more reverb on everything. And the choir adds more air and high frequencies, and not so much the honky elements because that's, the mids are taken care of already. So the choir can be a bit more oriented towards air and high frequencies, a bit less towards the honky frequencies. And, but when the horn gets louder, so you can start very muted, kind of low velocity. And then as you get towards the... Dun, dun, okay, now you can go towards like 80 something velocity, so it's like... You, you can go even higher, and you can do like a, like a mountain. It's like... It's like... In terms of articulation. You still kind of hint it, you don't go full blast. You, you make it buzz and you go back to muted again. So, yeah, b before the climax, you kind of want to hint towards the buzziness of the horn. And then you go full blast here, like, you don't hesitate. You go like from like a hundred to hundred twenty seven, kind of doing rises maybe like some, yeah. The choir is very muddy here. You can add more reverb on the bells, just make them very long. And yeah, you can hear how dry the brass is here, the trumpets are dry. Add more reverb, for sure, actually. I don't know why I didn't notice sooner. You can go a bit more for this demo and the articulation. And the choir, yeah, just brighter area. It's just very boxy. Everything is just very boxy. Uh, you might want to raise the sub bass so that it's kind of level with the mids, because right now the mids are overpowering. So, I mean, you're going to unmuddy the mids as well but you could also raise the bass as well. See how nice this is? So yeah. Yeah, but right now the trumpets are too loud compared to the brass. That's completely correct. So if you make the brass more busy, it might compensate. But the trumpets themselves are also a bit honky. And trumpets, trumpets around here. You can hear the trumpets slowly getting more sexy as I cut the one and a half K. You don't want like mafia trumpets that sound super muted and weird. 
but uh, guys, yeah. Uh, but like, you don't want to do like this kind of 1920s trumpets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the trumpets are just slightly getting more sexy as I cut the one and a half k. I mean, I don't know a better way to say it. <laughs> um. No, but yeah, uh, seriously, trumpets here, horns here, um, choir here, bass here. That's kind of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I love the build up. Uh, compositionally, it's a cool build up because you kind of keep the same pattern, but you add more things, so it it doesn't get boring. Which is great. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that stream. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you next month. I do this every month. Every second Sunday of the month. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing more tracks. And thanks to everybody who sent the tracks. <laughs> really appreciate it. It's great. And uh, yeah. So enjoy your Sunday, guys. And uh, I'm going to... I'm going to go drink some tap water now. So yeah. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>